Hi, and welcome to Nova University. My name is Mike Santos, Director of Sales and Product Development at Nova. We're down here in Dallas, Texas today, and we're going to walk through the process of how to make a photopolymer sign. So what does Nova Polymers do? Nova manufactures photopolymer substrates for ADA-compliant architectural and wayfinding signage. So let's take a look at a sheet of material and get started here. You'll notice each box of material has an instruction sheet that comes printed inside, and the photopolymer is in a black UV-protected bag. Let's take a look at a sheet here. What we're looking at here is our Novacryl PT118 series material. This is where we take a 32nd of an inch photopolymer and we extrude it to a clear PETG base. So which side is the photopolymer and which side is the PETG? The photopolymer has a 7 mil clear mylar protective sheet on it, which we can see here. The base, PETG, has a clear static cling material to protect it from being scratched through the process. Okay. Now, obviously the photopolymer side is light sensitive, so when we handle it, we keep it upside down, polymer down, PETG side up. The PETG is extruded with a UV inhibitor in it so the polymer doesn't get damaged while you're carrying it through the process before it gets exposed. So, let's bring it over to the photopolymer processor and get started. Okay, now that we're ready to get started, let's turn on the processing unit. We have a main power switch here that fires up the entire unit. The noise that we hear are the fans coming on for the dryer. When the machine is turned on, it automatically turns on the heating element and the fans for the dryer, as well as the heater for the washout tank. Now that the processor is turned on, let's open up our exposure drawer and get started. What we're going to do is grab our sheet of photopolymer, carry it over, flip it over so the polymer side is facing up, and we're going to peel off our mylar cover sheet. Now, we want to position the sheet of polymer in the center of the exposure table. Once we're in position, we can grab our film negative. Now this film negative was printed on our Inkstar inkjet solution. A couple of things to note. The image was printed right reading emulsion down, which means in the file, the film or the artwork was flipped. So as you can see, it's printed in reverse. I'll carry it over here. The reason for printing it in reverse is we want the emulsion to be down on the photopolymer, like this. The reason for that is when we draw a vacuum, we want the negative to make intimate contact with the photopolymer and make sure there's no air that gets trapped. So let's position our negative. One of the keys to positioning the negative is to make sure that the film stays within the perimeter of the photopolymer. The reason for that is if the film hangs over the edge, when we draw a vacuum, it could create an air flap for air to get underneath it and create a blowout during the exposure process. So once we have the film in position, we're going to take what's called a bleeder strip and we're going to place it on the leading edge or the edge that is closest to us. The reason for the bleeder strip is to create a channel when we draw the vacuum for the air to escape, which we'll see in a second here. Once we're in position, we can come up and turn the vacuum on and draw the mylar cover sheet over the surface. Grab a squeegee. And as I said earlier, the idea is to draw the air towards the bleeder strip. And what we're doing here is we're making sure that there's no air that gets trapped between the negative and the sheet of photopolymer. As we're drawing the air out, we're going to keep an eye on the vacuum gauge. What we're looking for is for the needle to be steady. When the needle is steady like we see here, that means that there's no air leaking and we're ready to go. So we give it one last inspection, make sure everything looks good. We're ready to close the drawer. and look at our timer. Right now our timer is set at five minutes. We're going to change this down to four and a half minutes by using our arrows. And we're ready to start. So 
once the exposure is done, the timer will reset itself. We turn off the vacuum, and we're going to take the sheet of photopolymer and place it in the washout tank. Keep our film negative here. We can actually take a look at it and visually inspect and see the images actually were exposed into the polymer. And now, the polymer itself will stick to the green mat on the platen. So we apply pressure from the inside out. Now we're going to close the lid and the platen is going to oscillate and scrub the unexposed polymer out. So we can actually take a look here and see what's going to occur. You can see the polymer is literally going to wash away in the water. Okay. So we close the lid. And our timer is set to five minutes. We push start. When the washout's complete, the buzzer's going to go off until we open up the lid. Okay. Now we can see all the unexposed polymer was washed away, and what we have left is all the areas that were exposed. Now to make sure that we washed it out completely, we can actually inspect it and run our fingernail along an edge and make sure there's no polymer left over there. Everything looks good. Now, in an ideal situation, we would have compressed air so we could blow or evacuate all of the standing moisture off the surface. In this case, we're going to take our urethane roller, just run it across the surface here. Okay? Now, the next step is to take the material and to put it in the dryer. Place it face up, our dryer, let it sit in here for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we can take the sheet of polymer out of the dryer. We want to inspect it first and make sure that we've evaporated all the moisture off the surface, which we have. We're ready to go to the fourth and final step, which is the post exposure. Again, we're going to lay the sheet polymer side up, close the drawer. We're going to come up to our timer, which is going to be preset for five minutes and we'll wait till it's finished. Okay, here we have the AccuCutter 19 inch tabletop finishing shear. The AccuCutter is a guillotine shear and it's used to cut the Novacryl PT series photopolymer. One of the unique things about the PT series is that we use a PETG base. Any material that's eighth of an inch or thinner can be shear cut to a finished edge. Now, if we have a sign job that is maybe a standard shape, eight inch by eight inch, six by eight, something like that, we have two options. One, we can send it to a CNC router or we can shear cut it. And the nice thing about the tabletop finishing shear is that we can do it right here in the photopolymer production area. One thing that you'll notice about this sheet here is that it was laid out in Workflow Manager. Workflow Manager, aside from doing all of the ADA um, rules and regulations, is that it allows us to lay out the job um, in a couple different ways. If we were to go to a CNC router, we have automatic registration marks okay, for our CNC router to find our cut points. We also have the ability to embed automatic crop marks at the corners. What that does is that allows us to take it here and trim it. So we're going to show you a demonstration of how easy it is to trim the photopolymer on the AccuCutter shear. Okay. We'll go through the entire demonstration here and just show the actual ease. Okay, trim these up. And the idea here is your photopolymer processing operator 
in between making different sign panels can come from the photopolymer unit right here and take a sheet that's finished and actually trim it down to size. What this does is this eliminates, in essence, an entire step in the process. Where if you're going to a CNC router, you're going to have to stack up all the jobs, put them on a tray, bring them to another department to cut it before paint. What we're able to do here is utilize that operator's time and actually eliminate one complete step of the process, reducing the cost to produce the finished sign. Let's just get this down really quick. And as you can see, we've got our sign that actually has a finished edge that's ready for paint. Okay, here we have the Kobo TC851 hot stamp unit. The Kobo is used to apply color to the raised tactile portion of your sign, typically the last step in the process. What we see here is we actually have a sign that does not have color applied to the surface of it. You can hot stamp directly to the photopolymer or if you have a surface painted sign, you can hot stamp directly to the painted surface. Okay, a little bit about the hot stamp unit. Right now I've laid the photopolymer sign down on the table. The table moves in and out, so we can pull the table out, prep our sign, and then push it under to bring the head down and apply pressure. What we see here is a heated platen, and the platen has a rubber silicone pad mounted to it. If we look up here, we have an adjustment knob. We can loosen up here, and this actually fine tunes the head, raises and lowers it so we have exactly the right amount of pressure. If we need to raise or lower the entire head because we're changing different gauge materials, we can adjust uh, the wheel here and raise and lower the entire head. Okay, so next we have our control panel. A couple of things in our control panel. We have our on-off switch, and right here we have our fuse, and here we have our temperature control. As I said, we're going to run at about 170 degrees Celsius. You can see when I turn it up, our light comes on, which means that it's still heating. Once our light comes off, we're up to temperature. Right here, we have an automatic feed controller. What that does is allows us to mount our foil, run it underneath, and it automatically advances. We're not going to use that feature for this demonstration, and actually, I don't really recommend it. Um, we like to actually place the foil on there manually, and I'll show you why in a few minutes. So let's get started. Take a pair of scissors. Okay, we're going to actually cut the foil to the exact size that we want. We're going to place that on the area that we want to stamp. And just for fun, we'll make the Nova a different color. Now the idea here is it's a heat transfer foil that at a certain temperature and a certain amount of pressure, the pigment releases from the liner. So it's not about a tremendous amount of pressure or time. So we're going to put it in here. We're going to stand, come down on it. We're going to dwell on it for about two seconds. One, two, and come up. And just for good measure, we're going to come in here and touch it just a little bit. Make sure that we get all the areas covered. One thing that you'll note that every unit is a little bit different. And would have what I would call a sweet spot. Just like everything else in life, nothing is perfectly flat. So that means that the head and the pad is not perfectly flat. So what we need to do is find this spot on the machine that works the best. So we make sure we get solid coverage. So we pull this off. We can see that we have the Nova covered. And let's see how we did with the numbers. Okay, there we go. And that is the basic way we hot stamp.